Yes, everyone, you know what time it is. It's your boy Jack here at the Irish Hotspur, here to deliver you a bit of a transfer news discussion, a bit of player analysis on the players we've been linked with recently, which is Leandro Trossard and Pedro Porro. We're going to start with Pedro Porro, then move on to Leandro Trossard. But the reason I'm kind of doing this here is because we weren't able to touch on this yesterday on that sort of debate show, that really good debate show with the likes of Sean, Wes the King, and Paul. We uh, spoke about mostly the Qatar sports investment and what that can mean for Tottenham Hotspur. So do check that out if you haven't already. And we didn't get to touch on these kind of recent transfer news that have come about with uh, some of the players that have been linked with Spurs. So I kind of thought maybe I'd touch on it myself and kind of go through some of the sort of, let's say, the the questions and uh, some of the discussion points that I did want to get stuck into. So everybody, if you do like this, hit that like button, please. But let's get straight into it. We're going to start first with Pedro Porro. Pedro Porro has been uh, brought up by uh, Dan Kilpatrick here at the Evening Standard. And he said that uh, Spurs have identified Pedro Porro as their top January transfer target with three signings wanted, including another attacking player and a succession plan for Hugo Lloris. While I do want to touch on maybe the Hugo Lloris uh, succession plan, this has more to do with Pedro Porro. So let's actually talk with first maybe who is Pedro Porro and what he could bring to talk Tottenham Hotspur. Last season uh, in all competition, he has eight goal contributions. This season, uh, he's actually already catching up to that with seven goal contributions, one goal and six assists already, uh, which does show that he's building on a really good performance from last season and he's having a pretty good one so far 23 years of age right wing back and he is five feet eight inches 1.73 meters tall definitely not a fully you could say the the conte physical build um which is maybe a bit skeptical because uh conte does seem to be a bit particular about that but pedro poro i think does have the quality to be able to make up for let's say not all the physical attributes that uh, maybe Antonio Conte might want. Valued around 45 million euros. That just, of course, just comes from his release clause is at 45 million euros. And Spurs have been kind of uh, dilly-dallying around and have been a, a little bit reluctant uh, to pay that uh, that release clause, which has frustrated plenty uh, very understandably. But let's get into some of the stats and maybe see why Spurs are really interested in uh, Pedro Porro here. Uh, com let's compare him to all fullbacks in the Champions League. So these stats come from his Champions League games, I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and are comparing him to all the other fullbacks that also played in the Champions League. So if you will, maybe really high standards of, uh, of fullbacks. And uh, we're taking a lot of stack categories with dribbles completed, crosses, uh, key passes. Uh, and key passes, by the way, are uh, a pass that uh, re uh, leads directly to a shot on goal. Uh, these are all kind of stat metrics that I think would really highlight a good wing back or a good player in a Conte system because I think a lot of these are sort of relevant to what we're looking for to in Conte system and Conte's kind of a, a wing backs because the likes of Emerson and Doherty maybe struggle in some of these areas for example yeah dribbles completed which is basically right just measuring how many times he skins it past his man uh, Pedro Porro was actually great at that in this Champions League against uh, in comparison to other fullbacks and uh, the closer that number is uh, when it comes to the percentile to 100 basically the better it is is. or if you also just want to look at the colors of it the greener it is also the better it is uh, but he's uh, skinning one and a half guys at least uh, per 90 in the Champions League when you look at his crosses he was getting in over five per game there and that's not bad when you compare him to other fullbacks uh, when it comes to his tackles one he was actually uh, getting stuck in quite often maybe it just showed that Sporting were pretty busy when it comes to Champions League and he seemed to be able to get his foot into a lot of challenges and uh the one little concerning thing is maybe the key passes weren't too high. I just decide to put that up there because I don't want to just sort of filter all the stats that make Pedro Porro just look amazing. I want to take a look at some of the stats as well that maybe were a bit concerning. And the key passes, which, what, like we said before, is a pass that leads directly to a shot on goal. He's not really, uh, you know, to rank too highly there, which uh, you could say is a bit of a concern. Uh, his fouls drawn, which are basically, you know, I think another metric of uh, how many problems is he causing the, the opposing fullback is he being tricky is he uh you know being a nuisance for them is he basically causing problems down his side and i think another way of measuring that would be fouls drawn and he's doing pretty well in comparison to other fullbacks in the champions league when it comes to that metric if we're just going to compare him basically to the majority of fullbacks across europe's uh, many leagues that includes of course europe's top five leagues but then we're also adding in his league the primera liga that would be the portuguese league i think we're also adding in the dutch league and stuff like that so we're comparing him to a lot of fullbacks here so 
I don't really know how to take all these stats into consideration, but he is pretty amazing when it comes to some of these, again, these sort of categories that we're really interested in when it comes to finding a good wing back in Conte's system. And uh, shots, uh, of course, would be a good one uh, because I think in Conte's system, we see the likes of Emerson and Doherty be given a lot of good chances uh, to be able to score, and they don't really seem to do so all the time. I think Doherty is a lot better at it than Emerson, but I don't think neither are really uh, acceptable or good enough uh, for where we really want to be uh, with uh, Conte. And so uh, Pedro Porro has actually been one of the best this season uh, as a wingback or as a fullback, if you will, when it's uh, terms to uh, getting shots off. Uh, Cross is still very high there, like he was in the Champions League. When it, when it comes to his own league, he's getting nearly nine crosses in uh, per 90. Key passes, he's actually doing a lot better there, which shows that, at least in the Premier League, uh, he's very creative at being able to set up his teammates. And then tackles one, actually, that goes down a bit from uh, what he had in the Champions League probably because uh, when he's playing for sporting in his own domestic league, he's probably not that busy defensively because they might have a bit more of the ball. Uh, when it comes to fouls drawn, again, though, that's consistent, and uh, he's uh, drawing a lot of fouls. So if you do kind of connect these, while they're maybe taking a bit of a drop-off in the Champions League, he's pretty consistent here, and it does show that uh, he was able to have some pretty good numbers in the Champions League that also are still reflected in his own domestic league. So he's able to kind of uh, still have that quality uh, in the Champions League at a very high level as well as a, in his own domestic league. So those are kind of uh, the stats that I want to present when it comes to Pedro Porro. Here's kind of the thing that I wanted to bring up maybe was our Spurs then more desperate for a right wing back this January than a center back because Dan Kilpatrick's headline had to do with the fact that Pedro Porro is apparently Spurs' top January transfer target. I think we all wanted a center back to be the one that's actually Spurs' January, uh, top January transfer target. I think that's what David and I has said. I think that's what plenty of people on this channel have come on and said that a center back for them should be the real priority because it's really the defense that have been leaking a lot of goals. But let's maybe explain why perhaps a right wing back could be maybe the, the top January transfer target. And that's probably because Emerson has been kind of shown the door. I think him and Antonio Conte had a bit of a bust up. Uh, he was kind of always reluctant, let's be honest, to play Matt Doherty, even though Matt Doherty is being given the trust uh, at the moment. I feel like he was always a bit reluctant to play Matt Doherty, and then he's never really trusted Jet Spence, and he's been quite cold, let's be honest, to, to Jet Spence. So that kind of leaves us really with no right wing backs to choose from. So we're maybe slightly more desperate for a right wing back than we are a center back. And uh, I can't believe it's come to that circumstance because I think we are absolutely desperate for a center back as well. But maybe if under that sort of logic, if that makes any sense at all, that could explain maybe why Spurs are more desperate for a right wing back than they are a center back because Conte has basically run out of right wing backs to trust or even uh, get the most out of uh, get the most out of uh, anymore. It, it, they are really desperate maybe at this stage, and it could be wrong, uh, but uh, it maybe does uh, maybe explain something. Uh, Chelsea apparently are also interested in Pedro Porro. That definitely isn't good because it could mean that either Spurs uh, fold or end up you know dropping their interest because they usually don't like having other clubs get kind of uh, mixed up in their kind of transfer uh, schemes or in their transfer races, let's, uh, if you will. Uh, or it actually could push Spurs uh, towards uh, actually paying for that release clause, which is actually a good thing. So maybe uh, Chelsea being in the race could be a good thing for Spurs. It also could be a bad thing, but that's also something to report as well, is that Chelsea, I think, are apparently joined the race, if you will, uh, for Pedro Poro. Let's talk about now Leandro Trossard, and this is coming from Sammy Mokbel of the Daily Mail, and he said that Tottenham have accelerated their interest in Leandro Trossard, but a deal for the Belgium international is not imminent, and any move is likely to take place later in the transfer window. He goes on to say that manager Antonio Conte is eager to secure a deal for Trossard this month. There you are, everybody. Apparently, Trossard could be a late January edition for uh, Tottenham Hotspur, someone that might not be happening right away, like uh, the likes of a center back or hopefully Pedro Porro, but someone that could be happening down the road in this uh, in this January transfer window. So let me know, everyone. Do you rate uh, uh, Leandro Trossard, and do you think he's a good fit for Spurs? Because this is kind of what we're going to be answering here when we take a look at the spa uh, take a look at the stats and a bit of the background here of uh, Leandro Trossard. Last season, he had 11 goal contributions, eight goals and three assists in all competitions. This season, he's already catching up to that, kind of like how Pedro Porro was catching up to his last season's output. He's on seven goals and two assists, which would be nine goal contributions. So he's already 
almost completely caught up there, uh, Leandro Trossard. So having a much better season here under the likes of Deserby, as well as, I guess, uh, the beginning with Graham Potter. 28 years old. He's a lot older than I thought. I think he recently turned 28, but he is a lot older than I thought, actually. I thought he was maybe around 25, 26, but he is actually 28. Winger, he plays mostly as a, as a left winger. I'm not even sure if he has ever played on the right. I've never seen him play on the right, which we'll get onto later, is whether he's actually a Kulisevsky alternative or maybe he's actually a sunny alternative. Uh, let me know what you think of that. Uh, five feet, seven inches. Another player here that maybe doesn't exactly fit the Conte sort of physical build, uh, but we'll get into that as well. And maybe how Conte seems to prefer perhaps these more kind of tricky uh, creative wingers. And I think Trossard actually fits that bill. 30 million euros is his evaluation. I, his, I think his contract is up in uh, six months or so, so he could end up being a free agent. So if uh, Brighton wanted to make any money from this, they could actually sell him this january window so it could be a possibility but i also i'm not sure i'm not sure brighton usually are a smart club so uh i'm not uh i just don't know how they'll choose to go about this but let's maybe talk about leandro trossard let's go through his stats really quickly uh and kind of get you a bit of context and maybe what he sort of you know is good at maybe what he sort of brings i kind of just picked a variety of stats here and we're just comparing him to all sort of wingers as well as attacking midfielders in the premier league when it comes to shots and through balls, he's actually exceptional. He gets a lot of shots off per 90, which is good to see. And he gets most of them on target, which is also great to see. Through balls, I'm actually impressed by that, that the fact that he is actually very creative for his position. And this is, again, comparing him to uh, other attacking midfielders as wingers and wingers, which is, uh, as we know, where the majority of kind of creative players come from. He's in the top seven percentile there. And I do actually feel like I've seen him play kind of through the lines a lot. I see him try to thread people through from kind of those wide areas on the left so it does sort of kind of uh you know check up if you will uh when it comes to that uh sort of stat dribbles completed i thought he was actually a much trickier player but apparently not or apparently just doesn't actually uh go after players or try to skin that many players but he's not really uh maybe that high in that metric and then shot creating actions he's not really high there uh when it comes to maybe a, a measurement of how creative maybe someone is uh, uh, with certain type of actions. And uh, that's also a bit interesting. So certain stats, let's say, of uh, Leandro Trossard are not really jumping off the page for me. But for me, I, I do rate him. And uh, I do think he is sort of a, a player that could make sense for Spurs. But those are some of the stats. And then uh, average shot distance, he's shooting it in and around the, the penalty area uh, by the looks of things. And uh, he's pretty clinical from what I've seen. But he also is kind of been labeled by uh, plenty of people as a purple patch player. David, I know, has labeled him as a purple patch player player so when it comes to uh leandro trossard it's a bit of a confusing one because is he being brought in to be a kind of a, a kulisevsky alternative i don't think so because i don't really ever see him play on the right and also brian hill has actually been given a lot of confidence recently uh by the and uh by the spurs coaching staff you've seen the likes of stellini confirm that he's going to be sticking around brian hill which is really good to see uh and that means then uh we're probably sort of maybe having uh, Brian Hill as the Kulusevsky alternative on the right. And uh, we're probably lacking then a sunny alternative or a sunny competitor because sunny, let's face it, really hasn't been uh, that great this season. And he's not really hit the the heights that we thought he would after being the Premier League top scorer. And I probably have to look at somebody to challenge him or somebody to at least come on and be able to sort of push him a little uh, on the, you know, on the on the number side and on the competitive side, if you will. Uh, Richarlison hasn't exactly been the most convincing winger. Dave, I know, hasn't been very convinced of Richarlison as a left winger or as a right winger. I know probably other Spurs fans haven't really liked seeing Richarlison play as a winger. Uh, the likes of Lucas Mora just basically has gone extinct this season. We haven't seen him at all. And so that means uh, Sonny doesn't really have anybody to compete with. He doesn't have any competitors in that left wing position. So could Leandro Trossard actually be more of a sunny alternative than actually Kulusevsky alternative. And that's what I have written down here. And that's what I kind of want you guys to answer. And whether you actually think that's a good idea for Spurs is to have Brian Hill be the Kulusevsky alternative. And then actually in the January market, they try to look for more of a sunny kind of competitor or sunny alternative because sunny for a few reasons, uh, it, it hasn't exactly hit uh, his form this season. Richarlison isn't really the most convincing uh, player as a winger. And then Lucas Mora just hasn't been sort of fit or available to us 
whatsoever. So we do need actually another attacker. We need another winger uh, it, it, to choose from for Antonio Conte. So let me know what you think of that. Let me know what you think of this kind of breakdown of the news and a bit of that player analysis, some of the stats and all that stuff that we brought up. When it comes to Trossard, I like the idea of a sunny alternative. Is he my favorite kind of sunny alternative choice? Probably not, but I kind of like the idea of, uh, you know, just bringing in a left winger to challenge Sonny. And Trossard is having a really good season. He is having a really good season. He's kind of on fire at the moment. I understand that, you know, David's notion, he's a purple patch player, but I feel like he he has a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, he could bring to Spurs that maybe we're kind of missing from Sonny this season, which is the, that sort of creative ability, you know, plays that through ball. He's pretty clinical at the moment. Uh, Trossard, he's just been a very tricky player. So let me know what you think of him. Let me know what you think of that. Uh, kind of transfer news and this sort of kind of uh, whole transfer roundup here. Hit that like button on your way out, everybody, and I will be seeing you. Come on, you Spurs and in Conte, I trust. Everywhere we go. Yeah.